When it comes to horror anthology shows, Tales from the Crypt was the one which had the biggest impact on my generation. Because it aired on HBO, it was completely uncensored, giving us the most gruesome taste of horror on our humble living room TV screen. And let's not forget one of the greatest horror hosts ever, the Crypt Keeper. Oh, the days of animatronic wisecracking corpses are long gone. I also remember the Saturday morning cartoon, Tales from the Crypt Keeper. What a contrast. It's like, hey, kiddies, here's the show that's safe for you to watch, but don't you really want to grow some balls and watch this? The show's name came from the EC horror comic of the 1950s, but many of its stories were taken from The Vault of Horror, The Haunt of Fear, and Shock's Suspense Stories. Many of the plots dealt with Siamese twins, dummies, and cruel people who get supernatural punishments. I present to you my favorite episodes. It's Cinemassacre's Top 10 Tales from the Crypt. Number 10, and all through the house. This is only the second episode. Back then, the idea of making a Christmas-themed horror movie was kind of ironic and original. A woman kills her husband and then is stalked by a crazy psychopath wearing a Santa outfit. She can't call the cops because her husband's body is still laying in the yard. There's some pretty good scares, and it's just as entertaining as any of the slasher movies coming out at the time, just without the filler. Number 9, Carry On Death. This is one of the more simple episodes. It focuses on a criminal who's running for the Mexican border. He's being chased by a police officer. He gets handcuffed, but ends up killing the officer. Now he's stranded in the desert and has to drag the dead body all over. I won't spoil the ending, but I will say it's so simple and so stupid, you gotta love it. Number 8, The Switch. Arnold Schwarzenegger directed this episode, and actually appears alongside the Crypt Keeper. A rich and elderly bachelor wants to seduce a young woman, so he goes to a mad doctor who knows how to make him younger. The plan is to surgically trade bodies with a young man who's willing to sacrifice for the money. But this woman happens to be very picky and doesn't even really know what she wants. I won't say what happens, but the payoff is a good one. Number 7, My Brother's Keeper. Here we have two Siamese brothers. One of them is nice, and the other one is just a mean, rotten piece of shit. He wants to be separated from his nicer brother, so he does everything in his power to make his life miserable, like being an asshole when he's out on a date. It doesn't really make any sense. Why would the good twin not want to be separated from the bad twin? Besides, they're just barely connected by the hip. How hard could the operation be? That's the only flaw in this episode, but it's a riveting drama of two brothers who hate each other's guts. Number 6, Ventriloquist Dummy. A struggling ventriloquist goes to his idol for help. He wants to know his secret, and well, he gets it. The trick to his success is having a Siamese brother on his hand. This little guy is the real talent. He's the only reason why this is one of my top episodes. All this craziness going on, it's like an early Sam Raimi or Peter Jackson film. Number 5. Split Personality Joe Pesci plays a bullshit artist who meets a pair of twins. They happen to be rich, so he pretends that he has a twin brother of his own just so he can marry both of them and inherit 100% of their fortune combined. The reason this is one of my favorites is because Pesci is always phenomenal in these kind of roles as a sleazy con man. But the real twins have their own tricks up their sleeve. Number four, Strung Along. Zach Galligan from Gremlins plays a puppeteer who goes to a golden age marionette performer to learn the tricks of the trade. The only problem is that the wife doesn't want the poor guy around. It may sound like the same old dummy story, but this one's a little different. It's a great episode because it tells a story of deception and of a husband and wife's relationship falling apart. Besides, we get to see a dummy killing people. Number 3, The Third Pig. The seventh and final season went way downhill. Every episode by that point was boring and unwatchable, until all of a sudden, in the very last episode, they hit you with a cartoon. Yes, the only animated episode in the entire series. It's a bloody, disgusting retelling of the three little pigs. The big bad wolf kills the first two pigs. The third pig is convicted of the murders. His brothers come back to him as ghosts, and then he creates a Franken-pig. Holy hell, this episode is fucking awesome. Number two, Yellow. 
This is the only episode that's an hour long. A soldier in World War I is convicted of the death of his fellow troops on the grounds that he was a coward and negligent in the face of danger. So he has to confront the general who happens to be his own father. The son never wanted to be in the war, but the father is a cold-hearted man of the machine and won't have it any other way. The young soldier is played by Eric Douglas, and the general is his real-life father, Kirk Douglas. There's an all-star supporting cast, including Lance Henriksen and Dan Aykroyd, and it's directed by Robert Zemeckis. This is another really unique episode. It's not horror material, and nothing remotely supernatural happens, but it's better than TV quality. It's like a movie. It may be the best episode if you take a serious stance, but my personal favorite is going to have to be one that's more funny and over the top. It has to be one that I like to watch repeated times and enjoy more every time I see it. Number one, Cutting Cards. It's a rival story of two gamblers who have an excruciating hatred for one another. We don't know why, but that's not important. All that matters, they fucking hate each other. So they decide to play Russian roulette. They load the revolver with one bullet, spin the cylinder, and each take turns pulling the trigger until one of them gets killed. But it doesn't work out because the bullet is a dud. God, maybe it got wet. God, you can't talk your way out of this fucking thing. Shouldn't he be happy to be alive? He's more concerned about there being a chance of the other guy dying. That's how much he hates him. Next thing, they're playing another game where they get to chop each other's fingers off. Both of them know how much it hurts, but they have zero sympathy. You can see the expression in their face, how much they love it when they get their turn. The performances by Kevin Tye and Lance Henriksen are outstanding. Seeing these guys go at it, for me, is the highlight of the series.